Welcome to the oddest little podcast on the internet. We are the Odd Pod. What's going on? I'm Stacey Kruger. Who are you, boys? I am Comic Con Casually Challenged. I'm Red Hazard here to talk to you about talking. <laughs> I'm Robbie and I'm writing a gigantically sad movie. <laughs> I'm Stacey Kruger and I'm just lame. So, uh, last podcast, you're like, wow, you guys went a long time. <laughs> Uh, strap yourselves in. Uh, we just we don't, that was only disc one of the Spider Man install. Uh, no, like we we got some shit to talk about. Uh, 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 wow, do we have some shit to talk about? Comic Con is happening. For those that are not in the know, when we say Comic Con is happening, it's the San Diego Comic Con. It's one of like three of the biggest comic conventions in the world. Yeah, I, I, when I say that, I'd necessarily think of like the biggest one. I I, I heard there was one in my uh, home state here in Minnesota. I was like, wait, there's one here. I had no fucking idea. It's I guess it's big er, but not not like San Diego big. Yeah, San Diego is where all the big things drop, and that's why today's podcast might run a little bit long. It might. Dude, mother, dude, do you see the line, the list of topics you put in the chat? Just you. I mean, guys, the other day I was sitting there and I heard my phone going off like a million and a half times. Like, what the hell's going on? I look, and it's Discord. He has put so many fucking topics. It took me like close to five minutes to read through all of them. It's insane how many topics we have. I can't guarantee we'll get through all of them, but it'll be a well padded podcast. Let's just put it that way. I'm glad you read them because I didn't. I decided not to touch that. He's just like so nope. po- <laughs> Robbie is the truest form on the podcast of too long didn't read. Robbie <laughs> will Robbie will be winging it today, <laughs> just saying it nicely. Uh, so it's we like I do every podcast. Well, it's, it's been about <laughs> two weeks since we've done a podcast, correct? Did we not do one last week? We didn't do one last week. I did we? Was that not the Spider Man right. one? I thought. I that thought, was, I I thought that was a week. week before. Ladies and gentlemen, a peek into our into our preparation <laughs> process. I have AKA a, none. I have a hard time keeping track of time. I'll, I'll admit this. Stacy, Stacy, what's the date for you? Uh, it's the twenty third. Okay, so no, it wasn't last. Week. Okay. Oh, I mean, yes, it was last week. God damn! <laughs> ah, god damn it! All right. Um, so a lot of shit has happened in about a week. How about that? How about we just say that much? A lot of shit has happened. Um, first off, uh, uh, Comic-Con casual, a lot, a lot of stuff has popped up. Uh, one that I really am excited for is Spawn because me and Spawn are kind of like this. We love each other. I love Spawn. Spawn is so cool. This is the concept of Spawn. And there's rumors that he might be being redone if I'm not mistaken. Like movie wise, <laughs> and apparently thank you from as from soon, Robbie. As soon as I opinion. talk about fucking Spawn achievement, uh. Uh, so so here's here's the deal. Uh, for those that don't know what Spawn is, because there might be a a demographic that has no idea what Spawn is. Well, it was uh, quite a while since the movie was released. Plus the cartoon that was well, out for a yeah. while. Yeah. The comic is pretty old. I don't even know if it's still going at this point because I don't read comics. Um, yes. But Spawn was a 90s character. Like, uh, the only thing missing from Spawn to make him truly 90s was a big giant gun and pouches <laughs> all over his body. He was a bit and... of that 90s uh, edginess, to say the least. Yeah, um, so what he was was an assassin uh, gets killed and goes to hell because he's an assassin. Mm -hmm. And when he gets to hell, he makes a deal with the devil to go back because he's got a family. When he goes back, it's five years later because it's the devil. Of course, he's going to screw you over. And now he's got infinite possibilities for his powers, but he's got a limited amount of power. Mm -hmm. So he can do anything, but it uses up his mana pool or whatever you want to call it. Uh, Video games and comics. Uh. (laughs) It it was it was a a great comic idea. Um, 
some of it was executed well, some of it wasn't. Uh, Todd McFarlane, who became famous for his runs on Spider-Man for Marvel Comics, uh, created it. Uh, him and a bunch of other big stars of comic books went and created Image Comics, of which Spawn was a part of. Uh, they have almost all since gone back to Marvel and DC, respectively. And then Spawn was just, like, so popular, there was a movie, there was an animated series, and there was talk of some other stuff. None of it was well-received, because uh, the movie was PG-13, and the comic was about as R as you can get. Uh, the yeah, animated was series was in HBO, and nobody knew what the hell Spawn was, so nobody watched it. Here's the, here's the Comic-Con news. Todd McFarlane, creator of the comic, is going to write and direct the new movie. That is going to be good. Honestly, that's going to be good. Um, My opinion on Spawn is this, that it's so many missed opportunities with one amazing franchise. It really it feels like the... the uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Um... The lineage of follies. Yeah, you know I mean, it's just sad because, like I said, the, the the animated series was good. It was really good, but wasn't well received. Nobody knew what the hell it was. Like you said, the movie was. <sighs> they did certain things right, like clown violator, you know, whatever. Um, very well done. They made him look good, and his personality, his voice was all well done. It looked good. Spawn's body looked decent it looked really good but the movie just felt lackluster i guess the best way to say it you know what i mean um the comics like you point out were r-rated as hell so a lot of kids couldn't read it i was i had parents who didn't give a shit so i was pretty lucky there you know but it, it was just good it was so i i really hope that with Todd taking over, writing it, directing it, it's going to be good. I hope he does. I, I hope he kicks ass with this. Because the I, I, one thing I was really a fan of was the art styling of Spawn. So with him directing it, maybe he'll make sure that everything looks perfect. You know what I mean? That everything is done right. Because I don't believe he directed the last one, did he? Uh, no, he had very little to do with the That's last one. Because okay. as... As typically happens in a movie, uh, people sign their lives away when they sign away their characters, and you get things like Fantastic Four terrible movies because yep. the people that own it don't. But here's here's my Lawn my Man. personal <laughs> take on the idea of Todd McFarlane writing and directing. Maybe writing. But as far as I know, he's never done a screenplay, and writing a screenplay is different than writing a comic. But directing? He's never directed anything. Like, he's not a director. He's comic book creator and writer and artist. True, but I don't know. there's also a lot of people who have blown our minds. I mean, uh, Affleck got into directing out of nowhere, and a lot of people weren't that excited for it, but he turned out to be a hell of a director. Same with... Well, uh, go ahead. Well, the thing for Ben Affleck, he's an actor. Very true. So he's he's around directors, and he sees all the stuff they have to do. And if you're, you know, like for example, Clint, I would bring up Clint Eastwood as as a good actor director, because when when he was acting, he was always around the director, even on breaks, because he was interested in honing his craft. So he said, "I need to learn a little more about the other people on this on this whole thing, so I learn how they do their job and what they look for." So. I Very make their true. job easier by I know what they're looking for. I so. totally agree with that, but I, I it'll definitely be interesting because I'm excited to see what he'll do. I'm excited to see if maybe he'll take advice and go, hey, I've never, as far as we know, he hasn't directed. And as far as we know, he hasn't done any screenplays or you know something like that. So I, I'm excited to see if maybe he'll go, hey, help me make sure this is perfect. But with him directing, we know that what is written will be perfect because he's going to write it and direct it. So we know that the script is going to be dead on with how Spawn's supposed to be. But it's it's also his baby. 
Yeah, so they, I I know the best for my for for my thing. Here, That's, here's the it's a real danger. Here's the problem. Uh, like like I already said, he's never written a screenplay, and they are very different. So he might write something that would be good in a comic book form, but then turns out not to be as good, you know, in the actual movie form. But the other the other big problem is here here's the thing. Spawn was a child of the nineties. Mm-hmm. Is it going to translate to now? Now I can tell you why I think this is becoming a movie again. It's because it's rated R and right now rated R superheroes are a big commodity. Deadpool, for so, example. Maybe Logan is another good example. Yep, absolutely. Maybe this turns out to be great because, hey, we can finally get the R-rated spawn. But again, I'm just worried that maybe it turns out to be, you know, another movie that we didn't need. I don't know. True. And before Spawn spawns a renaissance for 90 car- 90s comic book characters. <laughs> well, and, you know, maybe that'll be a good thing, too, you know. Oh, me being know. the freak for '90s comics, the the comic book characters like me. You guys know me and my love affair for Carnage. Um, like I, that's why I'm excited for this because I love those things so much, and I'm 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 excited to show a lot of this stuff to my kids. You know, my my daughter's old enough. My boy, I'm not so sure about. You know, he he's still a little young, but I'm excited to show him a lot of the stuff that I grew up and going. This is what Dad used to love. What do you guys think? I I think that. There's definitely a market for it to come back. It's just like you point out, will it be done right? And is it the right format for it? I guess. I don't know. Uh, Because here's the one problem I've always had with comic book movies. It's so hard to get what is on that page on the silver screen. Because there's... Sure, you can go do all the CGI in the fucking world. One CGI makes things feel incredibly fake. That's my personal opinion. It feels insanely fake when you do a shit ton of CGI. A little bit is very good. Uh, Deadpool, great example. Uh, it was only a, it wasn't a shit ton of green screen everywhere, a shit ton of CGI everywhere. It was well placed. Uh, Colossus, he actually felt kind of real. You knew he was fake, but he felt real. You know, um, it, it depends. With this, it, are they going to go with? Everything that Spawn did in the comics, which means it's going to be a shit ton of CGI, or are they going to do only half, so it's not going to be as much? This is kind of what I'm after. Are, uh, what is this movie going to turn out to be, you know? Well, I mean, there's always, like, a way they can do the stuff in the comics without, like, going full CGI. I mean, there's practical effects. Yep. The shit they can, they can do these days is amazing. They don't need to go full CGI for it. That's kind of what I was trying to get CGI. to. You know, I, I think I kind of overshot what I was trying to say there. That's kind of what I was trying to point out, that it's possible. It's just, I guess a good example was Ghostbusters, uh, where they went way overboard with CGI. Yeah, you know I mean? And it felt Does, cartoon. Was there that much CGI in Ghostbusters? Oh, God. It, we're, you're, he's talking about the new one, I believe. Yeah, the female Ghostbusters. That's, yeah. I don't, I, don't, um, I don't know what you're talking about. The, the, uh, that wasn't the only problem with that movie. Yeah, um, it's one of the problems, but I'm kind of just pointing out the CGI aspect. and It, it definitely was that, very CGI. My main problem with that movie is the fact that people keep insisting it exists. That's what? Pe- people keep insisting that it, it, it exists. <laughs> God damn it. Well, I it was existed enough to spawn another one. There's talk of another one. Well, I die out. No, see, uh, here's the thing. The Comic-Con has a lot of news. Uh, I believe that Ghostbusters is owned by Warner Brothers, and they don't want to just be known for DC, even though they, let's face it, they kind of are. Um, <laughs> so here's what happened. Well, DC and Looney Tunes. People got, mm-hmm. people got up on stage to talk about all of the different things that are coming out for Warner Brothers-related stuff. And one of the things they talked about was Ghostbusters. Now, they didn't say 
Ghostbusters sequel, they said Ghostbusters stuff. So there's potentially a plan for a new animated thing. They didn't say whether it was a series or a movie or what, and a live action thing. Again, they didn't say if it was a sequel. They didn't say if it was a prequel. They didn't say what, uh, you know, if it was a another reboot or whatever. But do we care? Do we like, uh, didn't, didn't we just get proof that we don't want more Ghostbusters? I, okay. (laughs) I mean, they they did have like a whole like plan set up before. Uh, the movie even came out, and they were going to do a shit ton of stuff, but the, the movie bombed, so I don't know how much of that is still going forward. Well, it depends on whose point of view you ask. If you look at the actual numbers, yes, it did, but if you ask from point of views, then no, of course it didn't. Uh, I would say this, that if they go for a sequel, it's dead in the water. There's, I, I don't see that being successful at all, but I would love, love, love to see them go with the original Ghostbusters 3 script that was floating around the net for a while, where Egon's daughter would take over. The Mac, and then, the Max, Matt Landis one? I think so, yeah, where they uh, pass it off. I think that'd be fantastic. I would love that. Because then it could, you roll in why Egon's gone. His daughter decided to take over. Um, you know, uh, they could move in why Egon's not going to be in the fucking movie. It could show the guys passing the torch. I think it'd be fun. It'd also bring a lot of the old school Ghostbusters fans back. But would it, like, haven't... Like, okay, so my opinion as a person who enjoyed the original Ghostbusters, maybe not so much the sequel, you know, people remember it fondly. Ghostbusters, to me, did something that had never been done before. And in that way, I think that it is a great moment in history for cinema and just, you know, originality. Mm Mm-hmm. But look back at it, really. It's not as good as people remember. There's there's plenty I of agree. slow moments. It It is funny, don't get me wrong, but it's not like high comedy and, and all the things that people seem to attribute to it. Well, now, to me, it wasn't just about the comedy. It was the whole story itself was fantastic. I liked yeah, the slow I mean, parts personally. Didn't, wasn't one of the major gripes about Ghostbusters 2 the fact that they focused more on comedy? Yeah, personally, uh, I I thought it was too trying to be too corny, trying to be too funny. I, I would agree with that, but that's my point. Like, I I feel like there are certain untouchable properties, and the reason they're untouchable is you just can't do it again. And they they tried to do it again with the original Ghostbusters two. It didn't really work. They spent years in development hell with Ghostbusters 3 and that never came to be because we got Ghostbusters 2016 instead and that didn't work like at what point does Hollywood say okay this didn't work again let's just stop I would say in a way I wish the Ghostbusters video game hadn't been released because that would have been the best sequel the best Ghostbusters three would have been that um, would have been the video game, but I'm glad it was a video game because I got the chance to play as a Ghostbuster and fuck that was fun, you know that was a great game. I don't know if any of the three of you guys have played it or if anybody listening has played it. If you have not, please go check it out. Go uh, buy Wait, it. That's uh, Telltale. Nope, not what Telltale. Was it? it was uh, no. Who the heck oh. made it? Uh, basically, you took the role as one of the Ghostbusters. You will and actually yeah, you're the you're the it. you're the fifth Ghostbuster. Yep, you're the new you're... recruit. Yeah. It's so much fun. All four of the boys are there. It was the original original the whole way through. It was awesome. It was a lot of fun. And I thought that for many of us who wanted that third Ghostbusters, that was really our third Ghostbuster. You know, it was a lot of fun. It had the same type of uh, funny that we expected, same type of action that you expect. It was really what everything you wanted in the third one. So here's the options I could see them having. A, they somehow do a stupid enough move of rolling the third that the game into a third one and make that part three, which would be fucking dumb and not possible. But, you know, I wouldn't put it past Hollywood because I've seen some dumb shit done by them. You know what I mean? Uh, two, they make a Ghostbusters 2016 2, which 
would be a failure. Mm, well, okay. It is it, Marvel and DC are both proving that you can self-correct in a franchise. Like DC had one okay movie, one very very divisive movie and one movie that pretty much universally people despise. Then they put out Wonder Woman. They they did self-correct and mm-hmm. we think Justice League might will we'll get to that probably. But oh, guaranteed. <laughs> but okay, let me let me actually play devil's advocate here. Okay. So, and we'll cover another topic at the same time. Stranger Things 2 is coming out. Mm-hmm. Uh it's a Netflix show. It's very 80s nostalgia. It feels like a Spielberg neighborhood with a Lovecraftian monster. That Vincent it's, Price crossover. over. It's a great show on its own, but it also has a lot of nostalgia porn. Okay. Now, some people thought that it was just nostalgia porn, and they kind of bypassed it and said, no. Here's the thing. I, I'm going to say that Ghost, Ghostbusters might work, if only for one reason. Stranger Things 2 is about to come out, and they're going to have a big Ghostbusters element to it. Like, the kids are going to have seen Ghostbusters because it's going to have come out during the period where it's set. And there's even, like, pictures of them with their own proton packs and traps. And we think that it's actually them somehow extrapolating devices to fight the monsters that actually exist in their in their TV show universe. Oh, so from the nostalgia standpoint, there is a market for ghostbusters, but like you were saying, what do they actually like? What do they do with it? Like, I feel like there's very few options and none of them sound good. I can't help but agree with you. (laughs) Um, I like, uh... Talking from my point of view, I would love to see a Ghostbusters 3, kind of the script I was talking about, the Ghostbusters go to hell or whatever, fight hell, or that one that was floating around where Egon Zara takes over. I think that Nostalgia Factor would be it would be kick ass. And same reason why Stranger Things was successful in Nostalgia, but that's a very good question you pose. Oh, boys, do you... Obviously, Stranger Things got a second season. It's happening. We know this for a fact. Do you think the nostalgia porn is strong enough to carry a third, go- uh, another ghost, uh, technically fourth Ghostbusters? And do you think it'll be strong enough to carry Stranger Things too? I, uh, I think it. W- Sorry to jump in. Um, I think it would because we're seeing a slight resurgence of of um, retro 80s things. Do you think it's just the fad, the coolness, the hipsterness of it all? That's it? Uh, yes. Because, you know, you just played uh, Far Cry Blood Dragon. Oh, God, that was awesome. That was fucking awesome, man. That game is only possible in the modern times. Yep. Because it's like, it's the uh, it's the popular perception of what, of what the 80s were like through the lens of Hollywood. That's about it, really. I mean, it had every 80s stereotype that you could possibly cram into one story. It was fucking awesome. The sex scene was just as corny and lame and just stereotypical as you would expect it to be. Especially when he rolls over Dunn, she goes, Wow, you're a man and all, because the guy is a cyborg. You're a man in all the parts that matter. He said, Yeah, I may be 95% machine. <laughs> But I'm a man in one particular part. <laughs> it's just where you expect all the ni- the 80s stereotypes and all the satire where it should be is there. And it's amazing because of it. I think the game would be fun without the stereotypes, but I don't think it would have been as, as amazing. Now, is hipster, 80s hipster thought and nostalgia enough to carry these? Both those franchises. Is it really enough, or do you think as soon as it's released, well, as soon as one thing's released, it's going to burn it out? I I think that Ghostbusters itself 
I I honestly don't know how they how they do it because no option is going to satisfy any fans at this point. Mm-hmm. There there are some fans of the original. Well, there's lots of fans of the original, but there are actually some fans of the new one. Um, there are people that would rather see the whole franchise just go away. Uh, there are, you know, the problem is trying to find the perfect movie, and I don't think they can do it. I think, in my opinion, they just let it go. They just say Ghostbusters in 1980-whatever was a great movie. Everybody just go watch that. Meanwhile, we will continue to push Ghostbusters as an idea in other things, you know, like okay. it's kind of like Gremlins. You know, if somebody were to say, we're going to make another Gremlins movie, why? Like there, it just, no, just stop. Is it really as, needed? No. Yeah. As for Stranger Things 2, that hopefully that's going to kick ass. Netflix is proving that they can do really great things. Uh, they basically just a uh, uh, little little potential insider info from from uh, an interview I watched with a guy who was a part of a Netflix show. He said basically Netflix hands money to the directors and the people, the creative people involved, and says. Have fun. So giving them that much creative control is why we've been getting these great shows. Iron Fist, yeah. maybe not so much. <laughs> um, I thought that was your favorite show. <laughs> but <laughs> as for whether or not uh, the nostalgia porn keeps working for Stranger Things... As we've as has already been mentioned, the '80s seems to be having this huge resurgence right now. So I think yes, it does. But I also think that we're not going to see, it, despite the fact that they've shown the Ghostbusters related stuff in the trailers for Stranger Things too. I don't think we're actually going to see that much nostalgia porn this time. I think that they established in the season one that it is the '80s, mm-hmm. and they showed a bunch of that there. Now we're going to move forward with real story. We're we're going to get involved with the characters even more. We're going to get involved in their universe. We're going to see very Lovecraftian things happening. They, I mean, there there's a screenshot that we think is what is known as the upside down in this universe. It's the dark world where all the monsters seem to exist okay. and. The picture looks like, I don't know, a gas station or something that's all covered in red goo. And there's like a red background that we think is the sky with a typical Lovecraftian giant squid alien monster like coming out of space. So interesting. So from from the perspective of nostalgia, I don't think it will rely on nostalgia this time. I think it will be its own story. Uh, and I want to talk about something else that's a little nostalgia esque and it's already pissing people off. And so everybody, you're going, but what, what, what about the DC stuff? What about the Marvel? Oh, no, just wait, we're gonna get to that. We're we're just buttering you up because that's gonna be our bread and butter. Uh, <laughs> um, Aladdin. Have any of you guys heard about the <laughs> castings for Aladdin? And uh, you're laughing. I'm sure you're gonna know what I'm gonna be bitching about. Uh, I haven't heard about this. I've I've heard that they're making one, but I haven't heard of it. Okay, casting. Robbie. What made Aladdin? What made that movie to you? The music? Really? Yeah, I love those songs. Yeah, I would say I would say the music and uh the genie. To me it was all Robin Williams. And Robin Williams made that movie and made it fun to watch. Now they're in the middle of remaking it, they're gonna do a live action Aladdin. And they picked someone for uh, uh the Aladdin. Um, it's not the rock, is it? No, thank God! Oh God! Like he's in everything. No, no, not the not the rock. He he's already ruined another movie from uh, another Robin Williams movie. Yeah, no. I just have this weird fantasy where the rock just remakes every one Robin Williams movie ever. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, no, it's Will Smith playing the genie. Now I can say this much: at least they got someone who's extremely good at. Um, playing a character and having a huge array of emotions. When I think of someone who's 
amazing actor. It will fucking Smith. This guy is amazing. But he Gene? can be. Well, as long as you he, don't got him in Earth One be. or Earth Earth One or whatever <laughs> before Earth or beyond Earth, Earth, Earth. Uh, after Earth. After, after Earth, 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 thank you. Yes. Welcome Where, to Earth. I love that that movie was set up so terribly. I'll get back to Aladdin. Hold on. I just have to say this. He wrote that movie for his son. Where he switched him and his son around. His the role he gave himself was really written for his son. Just a guy that had no emotion, no dynamics, just a fucking sit there guy. And he wrote a role that should have been written for him for his son who doesn't have the same ability as him. It was fucking hilarious. But at least you got somebody who's dynamic, who can have that energy that is needed for the genie by far. But genie? Will Smith, it's just, I guess I have a hard time looking at anybody who would play the genie that's not Robin Williams because he defined that role so well. Yeah, sounds, I mean, sounds, like, sounds like you're talking about Batman or the Joker now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, I could see him as the genie because I've, I'm picturing Will Smith uh, in like, like a kind of attitude that he does in some movies where mm-hmm. he gets kind of uh, playful uh and I'm trying to I'm trying to Men in Black associate movie? Yeah, something like that. I'm trying to associate that with the genie. I kinda see it, but it's not gonna be the same. Well it's I think part of the issue is that Will Smith over like the past decade or so has, has kind of reinvented himself as an actor. He hasn't done a lot of the uh a lot of the uh the more comedic side lately. He's, he he's also doing, doing a lot more dramatic roles. He also hasn't done the rap it in every uh-huh. movie anymore, which, you know, I I almost want him to do, like, the Aladdin rap. Like, well, can whatever. you imagine, like, you know the song that the genie plays? <laughs> the, you know the song that the genie does? You have never had a friend like me? Can you imagine a rap version of that? I don't know. I don't know if I would want that. That would be, <laughs> it'd be fun to hear. It'd be interesting to see how they do it for sure. It sounds so terrible. I really want to hear it now. Right? <laughs> oh, I got to say this, though. Look back the at the Prince, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Ma- remember how energetic was he was? The, uh, Go ahead. I was going to say the uh, the Fresh Prince of Agrabah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that just ruined everything. But, I mean, just think back to how energetic he was and how crazy and how you know colorful his, characters, his character was that he played. I think he could pull off the genie, but it's it. God damn, you're jumping into some fucking huge shoes, dude. Yeah, I mean that's some massive shoes you have to fill because. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, he, here's here's the thing. Like, I am not going to poop on him as the genie. I'm not going to poop on them doing the live action stuff because they've been a little hit or miss with their live action stuff uh, in the past, but recently like more recently they've been nailing it with it now say what you will about the live action beauty and the beast it it worked out that was a thing like like it wasn't it wasn't all terribly original and there was some kind of controversies about oh i can't believe they made this one character gay which they never in the movie actually said he was gay he just like hugs another dude in one scene that lasts for about a second and people flipped out about it. Now, part of it was because somebody involved in the production actually said he was gay, uh, that he was the first gay Disney character. And, you know, the media blew that up. Who gives a fuck? Exactly. Uh, Jungle Book was a better version than the original. That was made in live action? Yes. I've never heard of that one. Uh, Bill Murray was Baloo. Here's really? here's Ooh. the problem, though, that they're running into now. They're remaking Aladdin. Mm-hmm. They're remaking uh, The Lion King. They're remaking Mulan, and they're remaking Dumbo. Dumbo? Now, now how do you remake what everybody agrees still not only holds up to this day, which is both Aladdin, the original Aladdin, and uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, The Lion King. Mm -hmm. How do you remake those in live action 
and do anything different. Like in, in the case of the Lion King, they're even they're not even recasting certain characters because they know they can't recast him. So, for instance, uh, James Earl Jones is still going to be the voice of Mufasa. You know, like why? Why do some of these? I don't understand that part. I, I, because it because it's Disney and they have their their own mint. <laughs> we got that much. We need to print more money. Put out one of our other movies. I, I don't see any sir. Yes, words. sir. When I when I heard about Lion King, I, I legit spit coffee. I was like, they're going to do that. Why? I it, it was just so well done the first time, and I'm not a Lion King fan by any means. I mean, go ahead and remake the fucking game. That was an abortion on fucking wheat toast, please. You know, but what? Why? It was so good. It was so well done. I mean, are it was you, also it was also twenty three years ago. True, but I mean, my kids watch and they still love it. I, I don't see it being outdated. Oh, excuse me. I'm so sorry. I apologize, but I don't see it being outdated. Yeah, you know I mean, make way for <laughs> Prince Ali. Sorry, That's fresh we'll Prince to, to you. More like make way for Disney doing shit they probably shouldn't. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I will give this much credit to Disney. They can't seem to do any wrong right now. Uh, no. The Marvel movies are killing it. The Star Wars movies are killing it. You know, despite all of the supposed problems they're having. Like, people were saying that Rogue One was going to have all of these issues. Oh, there's been reshoots, and oh, the director this, and oh, the actors that. And then Rogue One came out, and everybody said, wow, that was a good movie. (laughs) Uh, Here's the caveat. Movies do reshoots all the time. Right. And, And so, at the end of the day, I don't think... I'm going to watch the Lion King remake only because I saw the Lion King. I'm fine with that. You know, I, I don't need to see the live action remake. I, I did not see the jungle book or the, uh, beauty and the beast remake. I hear they're great. Um, will I see the Aladdin one? Honestly, probably not either. Like, like I'm not interested enough to see it, but Maybe the new generation, the current generation, this will be their version. I think it'd only be fun to check out, for me, personally, just to see how they do Genie, and that's it. Just to see how Will Smith pulls it off. That's the only reason I would actually go to see it, ever. I have no interest in seeing it otherwise. It just it holds too true, and it's too good, the original. I mean, the the sequels, let's not get into those. But the very first one was pretty goddamn good. <laughs> um, a, I just had probably the most random idea about Aladdin. Lay it on me, boss. If George Carlin was still alive, have him be Genie. Oh. Oh. R, R-rated Disney movie for sure, but it would be worth it. <laughs> I was, was going to say, that would be a... He wouldn't just be blue in color. God damn it! I think. Of, oh, I'd like that. I, 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 I would pay. I would pay to see that. Right, dude. I would just because it's George Carlin. Um, <laughs> to another thing because we, we've been kind of saying I've heard overall kind of theme of was it necessary? Do we want this? Do we need this? Another thing that I didn't realize was still around and didn't think it was needed was Pokemon Go. It had its first live event. There was a Pokemon Go fest. I, I'm sorry, po- Pokemon what? Pokemon Go, remember that one where you had to walk around with the camera and point at your friends and catch a Pokemon in the face? Uh, I, thought, I thought that was I, Pokemon Stalker. Vaguely, <laughs> I vaguely remember people talking about something on their phones uh, many moons ago. <laughs> they had a full-blown fest for it. So I finally broke down. I was like, if I'm going to bitch about this game and critique it, I need to download <laughs> it. So I downloaded it, and I played it for a day and went, well, can I battle these things? Like, I, I went from playing Pokemon uh, Gold uh, to, like, I'm going to go play Pokemon Gold. So I did it. And I'm like, well, I can't battle my friends. I can't battle. What the fucking point? Yeah, you know I mean, like, I, I'm still at, like, level four. I deleted it. And I was like, fuck this game. It's not even fun. Yeah, you know I mean, and I made the mistake of not saying I didn't want to register my, my uh, email. 
I thought it said didn't want to register it and just wanted to play. No, apparently, are you of 18? Are you uh, above the age that you need to be is what it actually said. I misread it. So technically, I'm um, technically I'm a minor on that game, I guess. Uh, <laughs> but it's just, why? What, is this really relevant still? I, I, I haven't heard... Like, I, I know once in a while I'll pull up an article on here and we'll make fun of Pokemon Go because they put a new update, but that's all the buzz I ever hear about it. I haven't heard anybody talk about this at all. I haven't heard anybody uh, talk about Pokemon Go in months beyond me bringing up the story and making fun of it once in a while. The last I heard, I think they have somewhere around 60 million active players. Still? Really? Wow. But, okay, but do they? Uh, so here, here's my thing. Like, uh, World of Warcraft still going theoretically strong. They say they have 5 million active accounts, which might be true. But are these people actually playing it? Or are there a lot of gold farmers and people that just never turned off their accounts? I would well, that, say the latter. A, a, another another caveat for Pokemon Go: it's not just a United States based game. That it's is true. Really worldwide. Very true. I know uh, the, the humdrum in the U.S. was pretty much over and done with when it was finally released in France. And my friend Alice from over there was like, "I went out and hunt Pokemon the whole time." I'm like, oh, I forgot about that game. <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, apparently, the whole humdrum about this was they went and saw the first Pokemon Fest, and it was. Apparently, it was kind of, you know, uh, how do I just say it? Not exactly well received, <laughs> to say uh, at least. It was a wrong. disaster. It was, and they did a release of a legendary Pokemon. So everybody's like, "Yeah, hey, let's catch it." And, okay, what the fuck do I do with it now? You know, as or, as I always joke about with that game, but it was a complete disaster. It wasn't well received. Do we see the game going after this still? Uh, no, because who cares? <laughs> And so, uh, in this country, and I'm sorry, in the United States, sure. I'm just a little uh, confused. I mean, like, didn't so? So it's basically it's an event where they release all the legendaries or something, or just one? Yeah, just it, one. it was it was an event for if we get enough people here, you know, to do X Y Z, then they get first chance at catching at catching these legendary Pokemon, which is uh, Lugia and Articuno. Oh, okay, so. Really so I thought they were already doing that. It wasn't like like one of the main premises of the when the first game first came out. Well, no. uh, the leg- the legendaries weren't implemented yet. Um, there was a story a few months ago about somebody who caught an Articuno in Ohio, which turned out to be fake. But um, this one, these people at the fest had the first chance to catch to capture them. Now they're these Pokemon are available for all players. They're hilariously rare because you know legendary, but. It's just a big thing that we're finally getting, finally getting legendaries, so we're getting more Pokemon to put into gyms. Interesting. I remember when the game was first released, I remember there were some glitches in the system where people were able to put eggs in gyms, which made them unbeatable. So all they did was get points for it constantly. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I was amazed that this was a thing. This is the first time I've heard about Pokemon Go in a while. I'm... I, I feel bad for the people who are a fan of the game that it was a disaster, and I hope they can pull it around for the fans of the game. I guarantee I'll never come back to the game because it bored my it bored me to tears. I'd much rather go play Pokemon Gold or Fire or any of the ones right? on the fucking like, system. Like an actual Pokemon game where you can fight your friends and, yeah. you know, whatever. You, you get this weird thing called a DS or an SP or Advance, and you just walk around and play the fucking game in the real world. I know this is mind-blowing. But that's what you do. You're able to play Pokemon in the real world. Just, you know, you can't take a picture of your girlfriend's face while you catch a fucking Pikachu on her face. You know what I mean? That no. sounded so much worse than I think intended. <laughs> but then again, it's you, so it might have been fully intended. <laughs> Yo, Pikachu, stop grinding on my girlfriend's face. Um, Going from... Pika, Pika. <laughs> Pika. Oh, it's horrible. Um, what, do you think when Pikachu comes, it has electricity? Oh my just, god, that was so unnecessary! Like, it comes lightning bolts. I'm, 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 anyway, I, I'm asking on for we science. We just set a record. We made it 45 minutes <laughs> before we got something like that. 
and it wasn't even Robbie this time. <laughs> I couldn't help it. It was there. It was just line up the shot and out of the park. Oh, you could have helped it. You just chose not. It was to. there. God damn it. Um, you just shot early, <laughs> which is normal for me. I normally shoot way early, and I hear you done already. I remember in the kitchen making a sandwich. Um, to another thing where people were up in arms, and I don't understand why, was No Man's Sky. I know this was one of your quote unquote hot, hot one of your hot button issues, I suppose you could say, back when it was very first happening, casual. But people lost their fucking minds about this game. Well, so here, here's the thing. So. No Man's Sky, I know it's a topic that some people are like, well, what, people still talk about that? Um, well, maybe, but when when the game came out, there were every, everybody was saying, oh, the, the developers lied to us. And whether that's true or not, what I'm confused about to this day is... Why did everybody get so mad at this game? And I say that because developers lie all the time. Exactly. Like, literally all the time. They say stuff that is either patently untrue or that they want to happen but just never comes to fruition. And then the game comes out and people go, oh, okay, well, this doesn't have the thing that I wanted, but whatever. You know, and obviously there are some people in that get angry that it doesn't have what it is, but they're relatively small groups that that you don't really hear much from them because everybody else just moves on with their lives. Why was why did No Man's Sky cause such anger, like such furious hatred towards No Man's Sky for doing the same thing that developers continue to do? Like they, they did. It didn't stop with No Man's Sky, and also didn't I start would, with them. <laughs> I would say because they didn't have PR people to rein him in, you know, and basically get out after he says, you know, his pie in the sky stuff. And PR somebody out there to say, well, we, we've got we got plenty of things we're looking at right now. You know, just, just say usual boilerplate. You know, calm down, calm your expectations, people. Type of stuff. No Man's Sky didn't have that. It was just the developer saying stuff, and nobody was looking at the aftermath. I will say that uh, a prime example of what Casual was pointing on was World of Warcraft. I want to say it was Warlords of Draenor, if I remember correctly. In the expansion, at the um, BlizzCon itself, on the fucking artwork for the release of this, they said that they would have planes implemented, and you'd be able to do aerial combat. It just didn't happen. They dropped it because it was too complex with the old engine. They just dropped it. But it was on the actual release. They were hyping this as fucking huge update to the game where they're going to have airplanes. You're going to actually be able to do aerial combat. They fixed all these issues. But it never happened. You know how many people I've heard lose my mind over that? Legit, I haven't heard a single None. person get pissed. But now... Right. With No Man's Sky, and this is still relevant because if, as a Twitch streamer, I can confirm that if you even mumble anything about No Man's Sky, you see your chat room blow up of people bitching about this game. <laughs> right. That that's what that's my point. Like why why the pure vitriol towards this one game that, like like here's here's my take on it. I think that. People attributed things to this game that were not there. Mm -hmm. Like, they had in their mind all of these things they wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. And I say that because, yes, some of the things that the that the No Man's Sky uh, dev said were maybe not entirely accurate. But at the end of the day, I watched all the same... Uh, content that everybody else watched. Like I saw the v interviews. I I listened to the you know what they. I watched all the videos about the tech and stuff like that. And what I got out of it was this game is going to be a about exploration, which is true. It's not 
very good exploration, but it is about exploration. B, the main dev wanted a zen experience. He wanted a game that was relaxing. He said that so many times that it just, in my head, I said, okay, this might not be like the game, you know, that that I'm thinking it is. It's not going to be Star Wars, you mm-hmm. know, made real. It's going to be something different. Then he also said there would be potentially multiplayer. That was, let's face it, a straight up lie. They couldn't figure out how to do it. And they never said, we're not having it. Now, I will say, he they didn't say some of the things they aren't going to have. Like, they didn't come out and say, okay, we said we were going to do this, but we can't. Like, some developers do that. They say, uh, by the way, I know we said we're going to have this, but we're not. But still, I just don't get why people jumped all over and said, oh, you lied to us. You're a horrible person. You should die in a fire. And he actually got death threats. So you can imagine why he kind of disappeared from, you know, the Twitter and yeah. media. It's it's sad that he did because guess what? It's just a game, guys. In the very end of it all, it's just a game. He does not deserve threat death threats over a fucking game. And Which, mind and you, I enjoyed quite a bit if they would have had a non-broken FOV slider. I would have had a blast that game. For the record, they have updated it. Oh, yeah. Like, multiple times, they added uh, building of structures on planets, they added uh, vehicles that you can drive around on the planets, and there's some kind of update that is coming out, I think, next month. So, it, it's not like they just put, like, one of the one of the things I heard so often was, oh, this was just a money grab, he's just taking our money and stealing it. No, they wanted the game to be everything they promised. They just couldn't deliver. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not a money grab. You paid for it. Exactly. I mean, if you bought it and you got a broken game that didn't work and it wouldn't and work, no period. Refunds. Exactly. No refund. Then, yeah, it goddamn right. He stole it. But he didn't, dude. It was your choice to buy it. It was your choice not to refund it. You know, like I said, the game... Had so much potential. It's a lot of fun if you just want to have a nice, relaxing fly around to gather some materials, to uh, fix your ship and go, fuel your ship, and just explore. It's a fucking fun game to explore. It's, but, a, it's a beautiful screensaver. <laughs> yeah, and once you find a world that you think is so beautiful you can't leave, go ahead and build your base now. You know, and it's it's really cool, but that's exactly what it is. That's it. It's just... Yeah, that's, that's all it is. And that, you know... F- I, I think that might be why most people are angry. I don't know. Maybe maybe people can comment on, on YouTube or something, but I, I just speaker. don't get it. Yeah, absolutely right. I don't know. I To me, I just thought it was silly. But, boys, it's been close to an hour, and we haven't talked about nearly enough Comic-Con. I say we get into the meat and potatoes of Comic-Con. You know what I'm talking about, right, boys? Well, I would say comics but ironically comic-con is more about movies is that stupid no there's one i (laughs) really okay what am i guys when it comes to comics what's my favorite comic uh uh uh, uh, shoot i I know the answer to this one it's freaking um squirrel girl (laughs) fucking batman guys on on the nose rad (laughs) there is some news about batman Apparently, Batfleck, there's rumors Batfleck might be uh, said goodbye to. Okay. This is just so, rumors, just rumor mill. Let's, yeah, let's let's put that out there right now. All of this is rumor right now about Batman because they, uh, they don't know what they're doing. But um, what's his face? Ben Affleck is is rumored to be no longer involved in uh, like like we know he's no longer the director mm-hmm. and the current director doesn't want to use any of the old scripts he wants to use a new script and yeah. apparently Warner Brothers is like okay for the record the new director is Matt Reeves a director of uh, the latest plan- the last two planet of the apes movies which for for the 
third record is actually good movies. Like if you haven't seen them, they're they're not big blockbustery movies. They're actually more intimate and personal stories and surprisingly good. Like I I I saw the first one kind of like eh, but I was I enjoyed it. I saw the second one. I haven't seen the third one yet, but I will eventually. Um but there's talk that now not only will Ben Affleck not be directing or uh, involved in like most of the ways, he might not be involved at all. Uh, the current rumor is that basically they want to go with somebody younger and do a different Batman story. And let's face it, Ben Affleck is he's in his. 40s, I think. Now. Uh, he is. If, if they 25. did a Batman, if they did a Batman trilogy, he would be in his mid 50s. Right, and that's that's the thing. They're talking about a trilogy, so if if they don't go with Ben Affleck, the question now is, for for the fans of DC and of Batman is: Are they just are they doing another reboot? Or what's going on? Like, because we've already established the Batfleck, mm -hmm. and most people liked him. I liked him. Yeah. Well, I mean, in like Batman v Superman, he was. He, we, they the started. Part. The, well, yeah, obviously, but uh, he, he started out as a really old and grizzled Batman. So, I guess they do have a plenty of prequel potential. Well, that's. I, mean, I, I guess it's like a like a young Han Solo. Kind of well, that's the whole thing that I was thing. thinking, though, is that they've already had established that he's supposed to be old man bat. He's supposed to be the old crotchety bat. Why? Yeah, who, who the, the whole point people. is that he's old as fuck and that he's aging. Why go, well, you know what? I don't like he's old anymore, so we're going to fire him and reboot the whole thing. What I, they I could do, and what they probably should do, which would be really fascinating, is you know, Batman does his thing, you know, Ben Affleck, all that stuff. He realizes, yeah, I'm getting a little, little older for this. I should find somebody else. I'm going to look for somebody named Terry McGinnis. Azazel? And see if I can pass it on as uh, Batman Beyond. Yeah, Batman oh, Beyond. you mean Batman Beyond. I thought you were talking about uh, Azazel. I, or I mean, maybe, but but like, I, I would say the biggest problem they have right now is all of the rumor leaks. And by the way, uh, for the record, this rumor is coming from a uh, Hollywood reporter, I think, which yep. is one of the more uh, stable, you know, when they trustworthy, when they leak something, usually their insider source is an actual insider and Hollywood is pissed at them. Um, <laughs> Are they still doing Nightwing movie? Well, OK, so That's... here's the thing. Let's. Let's kind of cover this whole DC stuff. So, obviously, Comic-Con hyped up the Justice League. There's a new trailer out. I recommend people watch it. It's kind of long. It has some of the stuff from the previous trailer. But if you weren't hyped before, you might be now. I'm really going to like The Flash in that movie. Oh, The Flash looks so cool. The, the Flash, I wasn't fully on board for. I, because here's the thing. The Flash is the Spider-Man of the DC universe. He mm -hmm. is the funny guy. He's quippy. He's, you know, he's the comic relief in the Justice League. Here's the problem. Aquaman is coming off as the comic relief in this new, in these trailers. And uh... the Flash is kind of just... There-ish. I would disagree because uh, look at the when everybody disappears and Flash just standing there going, "Oh, wow, they disappear." That's kind of rude. That that was definitely comedic as hell. Yeah. Also, the part where he mentions like, "I've never been in a fight," yeah. like just push people right away. I was away. cackling my ass off. During that that, part. that was funny. I I agree. They are definitely hyping me for the Flash now. But but here's here's the problem I look at. DC has been really good at trailers. I mean, Suicide Squad had an awesome trailer. I can smell the Kappa from here. <laughs> Batman v Superman had a couple of really good trailers. They I sold disagree. us on the movies. Yeah. I disagree. Yeah, well, I, think, I think Suicide Squad had a terrible trailer. 
the really? the first well they've had they've also had bad trailers but they've had these trailers that people went oh now i'm excited uh, are we seeing another one of those or do we think justice league will actually like be good hey i am totally pumped for suicide squad 2 <laughs> which is on the slate that. Ripping in sarcasm. Suicide Squad 2. Once again, did we ask for this? Did, did, uh, did we really want this? No. <laughs> I know I don't. I mean, especially I, after s- Suicide Squad 1. My thing is. Stacey, are, oh, Stacey are you under the impression they care what we want? <laughs> they got a point there. Uh, the first one was just terrible. Why would you go, you know what was a really good idea? Well, look at Sharknado. That got a fucking couple sequels. So I guess really Hollywood does dumb shit because Hollywood. But it, it, it uh, really? Why? Are, are, well, okay. So let's, let's put this on the table right now for those that might be listening to this and saying, oh, they, they're, 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 they're. most of what they l- announced at Comic-Con is in no form of any kind yet, other than an announcement. Like, they announced Wonder Woman 2 because Wonder Woman kicked ass, and of course they're going to announce Wonder Woman 2. Mm -hmm. Uh, They announced Batgirl is still on the slate. They announced Green Lantern Corps is still on the slate. Suicide Squad 2 is apparently on the slate. But here's the thing. The only movies we know are actually like in production and being made is Justice League and Aquaman because nothing else has any like th- there's nothing there yet. There's, you know, barely scripts. There's no casting no- that we know of, you know. So like it, I I don't know if DC is in trouble. Like, there's a lot of people that say, oh, DC's in trouble. I don't think that's true, because even their crappy movies make $500 million. I've been hearing DC's in trouble since the fucking 90s, man. You know? Yeah. Uh, But what I will say is some of the choices they seem to be making, like like Suicide Squad 2. Uh, Why? Uh, You know... Am I terrible? I don't want to go back to Justice League for just a second. Am I terrible for being amazed that people are actually into Aquaman and they made a good Aquaman that was relatable and fun to listen to and get into? Well, I will say part of that is Jason Momoa. Um, he, like, uh, everybody is saying that when he came into Comic-Con, which, by the way, Nobody expected him because he's in the middle of filming Aquaman still. Mm -hmm. And apparently he flew from, I think they're filming it in like Toronto or somewhere. Uh, He flew from wherever they're filming it to Comic-Con for the panel and then left. And when he was in the panel, um, to give you an example of how enjoyable this guy is, They had question and answer portions, and uh, apparently some kid asked a question about, will we see Superman in the movie? And Jason Momoa answered that question by saying, I don't know if you saw the last movie, but he's dead. (laughs) So, and Uh... and he said it with a sarcastic, like, you know, like, like a smirk on his face. Like, he's having so much fun. What world are we living in where Aquaman might be the best DC movie and we're looking forward to a Thor movie? Because uh, <laughs> I think I think Aquaman is the adrenaline junkie of the Justice League. That is uh, what it seems like. I could see that, yeah. I could totally see that. Uh, plus, I... <sighs> going to what Aquaman has become... He seems the one of the more relatable ones, too, as modern people of, you know, Aquaman cares about Aquaman, doesn't care about anybody else. He much rather take care of himself first before he takes care of anybody else. You know, take care of him and his people first. And I, I think it's relatable. That That's actually one of the buzz things going on right now is people are saying, well, Aquaman seems to be like 
the character that we want that we can un, that we can understand like we we he's going to be the um people are saying he's going to be the the audience surrogate for getting to know the justice league like he's going to be the outsider looking in saying you guys are all freaks and mm-hmm. and what's going on and all of this stuff and who knows that it, it could be i can it see could, that could. because um i am not ash- not ashamed of this by the way aquaman is the fish out of water oh <laughs> rad I mean, <laughs> come on that writes itself <laughs> you don't, get don't, the claps for today don't shoot the messenger uh, Robbie, what were you going to say? <laughs> I was going to say, it could be that, and I could definitely see him being that, given what I've seen from the trailer. But I've always seen Aquaman as being a kind of, well, like kind of like, like Rad said, he, he's struggling to fit in, because he's, he's partly from both worlds of humans and Atlanteans, mm-hmm. and he's always struggled to fit in in either so making him more relatable to the human side, uh, while I understand why they do it, I just don't know if it's right for the character. It, 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 it's crazy to me because I remember growing up my whole life, I was like, fucking Aquaman, what's he going to do, attack you with the tuna? Yeah, I mean, he was always just so lame. Now it's like, holy shit, this guy's actually kind of cool. He's, yeah, he he's cool. He's interesting. This is possible? I want to see the Aquaman movie. <laughs> What's right? going on? <laughs> what are those? What? Oh, God. Don't now, get me started with that, please. Now, I do want to cover one of the other characters, which is the Flash. Because one of the things that's been going on is the Flash has is one of those problem movies. It's lost, I believe, three directors now. Uh, the the script is in question. We we don't even know if there is a script anymore. Uh, the only thing we know is the actor is going to play the Flash. Like, the one that's in the movies is going to play the Flash. Ezra but, Miller. But what they announced kind of makes me wonder what what's going on in DC's, like, movie universe because they announced the story for the flash and possibly the title flashpoint really now they're gonna be now for that story right now now one of the things i heard a lot of people criticizing is the choice of dc doing certain things like for instance in batman v superman they shoved in the frank miller one shot the dark knight they shoved in uh doomsday and the death of superman and people are like, why did you go to the death of Superman first? And now they're announcing Flashpoint. Like, for those that don't know, Flashpoint was a comic that basically Flash went time traveling like he does. And he fucked everything up it, so it's... badly that it liter- he literally had to help reset the universe, and it set the stage for the DC reboot called The New 52. Mm-hmm. So that they're doing a movie adaptation of a reboot? Right? Yeah. Like, are, is this their plan to reboot the universe and hopefully get people on board to a better version? I, I, don't, I don't know why they would choose this story so soon. Or do you think they're just using the name because it's coined as Flash? Flash, Flash Point. Do you think they'd be or, dumb enough to call it that maybe. just to use the name? I, I don't know. I mean, if they if that's all they're doing, that's a terrible idea because Flashpoint is a very uh, popular story. It's it's like Civil War and Infinity War or, uh, for Marvel. It's it's a very you know it's a story that everybody goes, oh, I can't wait to see that. Mm-hmm. You know, but why do it this soon? I, I don't know what's going on. It could be a way to pivot the films closer to uh, the Wonder Woman vibe as opposed to, you know, Man of Steel, uh, Batman v Superman vibe. Well, wasn't that, that's, didn't she take more of the Justice League dark styling, if I remember correctly? Or I've never, I still haven't got a chance to see Wonder Woman yet, so. Uh, well, Wonder Woman is. 
I, I, it's, it's hard to say because Wonder Woman was still being made during the Dark Snyder broody verse. Okay. Um, but uh, we, we don't know enough yet. You know, we haven't seen enough of the movies, but it, it worries me because they're they're announcing Flashpoint uh, and they still don't even have like a script or directors. You know, like. Maybe maybe keep that in the bag for a while. <laughs> Stop blowing your load on one particular movie, honestly, you know, basically. <laughs> no, it's yeah. Like, like, honestly, Death of Superman sh- should have been their first big event. Absolutely. Yes. That should have been its own movie, period. No fucking arguments yes. about it. Absolutely. And th- this is why I wonder where they're going. You know, I wonder if they, you know, uh, this is why I'm still not fully on board for Justice League. Obviously, I'm going to see it. I'm a nerd. I love this stuff. But <laughs> but uh, I'm not I'm still despite I love the new trailer. I there's to, it, similar to how I am giving absolute faith to anything Marvel puts out. It's the exact opposite with DC right now. They can put out the most kick-ass trailer of all time, and I'm still going to go, I'm going to go in cautiously. <laughs> it's bad that you have traps. to do that. It's bad that you have to do that, though. Honestly, it's fucking terrible that you have to do that because it's just how it's been. Yeah, you know I mean? It's what we've – it's, I guess, a learned response from DC. And me being the DC freak I am, too, it's really sad for me to say this, but it's true. It's the learned response from these guys of going, well, you've disappointed me so many times before – why would I put my faith in you now? Right. And the fact that they're considering as far uh, wasn't there some mumblings about Sh- uh, Shazam getting his own movie too? Uh, yeah, they announced Shazam and I'm they amazed. also strangely uh, said The Rock was going to be in it. Uh, yeah, The Rock which, was supposed to play <laughs> Black Adam. Which they, they didn't say what he's going to be in it, though, so he's probably not going to be Shazam, but they... No, I just said, they, they, they said he was going to be Black Adam, the villain. For sure? But yeah, I remember like hearing rumors about this for years, and even, even up to recently. Yeah, but I, I don't know. Uh, I mean... Well, I remember he put a video out, you know, say, basically him saying, yes, I am in the Shazam movie as Black Adam. Because I think he's a fascinating character, or blah blah blah. Right. Uh, and and kudos and all, but they didn't really announce anything else. Uh, they they just said yes, Shazam is on the slate, etc. Uh, they didn't announce who's going to play Shazam. They didn't announce what. Which, by the way, should be two actors because the yeah. part of Shazam's thing is that he's like a ten year old boy who says Shazam and becomes like this superhero. So. Fun, uh, fun side note: Shazam is actually an acronym for all the uh, all the gods that give him his power. Really? Also, also fun side note: he used to be called Captain Marvel. Yeah, I love well, that. I love yeah. that. way back in the day. Marvel Comics sued DC, who had had Captain Marvel for like years at the at this point, and then they won. Because they were Marvel Comics and copyright law is really confusing. Fucking copyright law. Uh, <laughs> well, it's just dumb. It's dumb. Anyway, but uh, I've never been a huge Shazam fan, so I don't see me jumping up to go see that. But it would be interesting to see what they do. Hearing that The Rock's in it immediately makes me not want to go see it because The Rock plays <laughs> The Rock. So you're gonna you're not gonna see Black Adam. You're gonna see The Rock dressed as a Black Adam, playing someone. It's just how it's gonna be. Um, I would agree with that. It's ugh, God. Oh, oh, oh yeah, hold on. ready, everybody. Let's line him up for his headshot and eyebrow. Movie sold. Thanks. Uh, eh, eh. I guess that one I'm really kind of meh about right now because it's, it's just fucking Shazam and it's. You and me have two very images of The Rock. Also, uh, remember, this is just on the schedule. Remember when there was an Inhumans movie in the works at one point? Oh, yeah. Now it's a TV show. Schedules can change. Very true. Very, very true. Uh, Speaking of Inhumans, anybody got opinions on that? Um, I've heard little. I'm going to watch it? Yeah, I'm going to watch it. That That one guy from Game of Thrones is in it. And, yeah. But, like, like, I... 
I've heard a lot of a lot of things about the Inhumans, like fans of the Inhuman comics saying, "Oh, this show doesn't look anything like it." Well, first of all, it's not a show; it's a trailer for a show. Um, secondly, it's a TV show, so budgetary issues are going to be a thing. Just maybe. <laughs> um, as for whether or not it's going to be, you know, a good show, I, I honestly like. I'm not excited because of the trailer, with one exception. I I know very little about the the Inhumans characters other than one of them has hair that can do anything, uh, and that's Medusa. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, one of them, if he shouts, he can destroy cities or whatever. Oh, Black Bolt like, or, or or planets. And one of them is a giant teleporting bulldog. Yeah, uh, one ton bulldog. Lockjaw. Oh. Now, what makes me what makes me want to watch this is the fact that they actually are doing the giant teleporting bulldog, mm. and I'll tell you why. <laughs> because it's so weird. Like, like they've they've introduced Howard the Duck a couple times in the Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh God! As Howard just a the little nod, duck. Uh, Little little nods to the fans going, hee hee, look, we still have Howard the Duck. But this is the first time that they're really going balls out. Yes, this is Marvel Comics. We are doing a giant teleporting bulldog in a TV show. But he's such a good boy. And oh, I, I, like I said, I'm I'm fully behind it because of that. Now, whether or not it turns out to be a good show... We'll see after the first season. When you say uh, chick who can have her hair do anything, all I can think of is that one video game. I can't remember for the life of me. Her hair is her clothes, and it can do... Uh, like, Bayonetta. Bayonetta. Bayonetta, thank you. That's all I can think of is Bayonetta. That's legit all I can think about. Yeah, I, I don't know much about the characters other than that. Um, you know, some fans are, are flipping out because, oh, this isn't like the comic, and no, it's a TV show. Get used to it. <laughs> uh, I can't remember. Was there anything released about uh, Green Lantern, like the actual plot of it? Did they? Did, is there any? Nothing. Are we expecting uh, another fucking green animated suit? You know. <laughs> the only thing that I've heard about Green Lantern is that in the New Justice League trailer, the lanterns get mentioned. That's about it. That's yeah. About the it, huh? the New Justice League trailer, uh, Steppenwolf, which is the villain. Well, well, we think it's Steppenwolf voiceover says. The core is gone. Like that's all he's, or the lanterns are gone, or something. Yeah, like that. He, I mean, he lists off like a uh, no lanterns, no Kryptonian. This world will fall. Yeah, and with that, they did announce at the at the Comic Con panel that yes, Green Lantern Core, the movie is still a thing. You know, they just didn't they don't, they don't, didn't give any information. They just said yes, this is one of the movies we plan to do. So again, things could change. We don't okay. know. Uh Doctor Doom. Anybody getting his own movie? What? Right, dude. I would have never seen that. I, I, I just didn't think Doctor Doom was that. You know, uh, what's is that? this part of some kind of reboot, or is it related to any of the previous Fantastic Four Ooh, movies? Uh, that's okay. So here's the thing: uh, Fox owns Doctor Doom. Because they own the Fantastic Four. Mm -hmm. Now, I believe the way that they can continue to keep the rights is if they use the Fantastic Four in a movie within the next eight years of Fant Four Stick releasing. Because really they have that's to, how huh? that's how long they keep the rights. For eight years, if they don't release something within those eight years, it goes back to Marvel. Okay. Do they get around it that? By doing a movie with Doctor Doom, which could be interesting, I'm not. I'm not saying it's not going to be a good movie. I I actually like the idea of doing a movie around Doctor Doom because Doctor Doom as a character is really potentially interesting. Oh yeah, I wasn't trying to bash it by any means. I just never thought he was worthy of his own movie. But it would be fun to explore the character and see what they do with it. But basically, what you're saying is, are they going to keep the copyright laws by doing the Doctor Doom movie and they mention? And they just right. kind of talk about the Fortnite Four, like, "Hey, hey, guys, we still like, have like, workers. like Doctor Doom in a scene says, oh, that Reed Richards and his sister Sue and his friend Johnny and the other guy.' And 
it's Ben, by the way. Uh, you know, do they get away with not doing a Fantastic Four movie by doing Doctor Doom and having him just offhand mention them or something? Or are we going to see them in this? Oh, I, I don't know what Fox is doing. Like, I, 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 it uh, seems strange to me. I know this Doom movie is going to be the best movie ever made. Reason being, <laughs> nobody questions D- Doctor Doom if you value your life. Jesus <laughs> um I would okay, say I'll that do. it needs to be a reboot. I, I can't see them going off of Pant 4. Yeah, I mean, right. And and this is the other problem, though. They have they didn't announce it at Comic Con, but there are people in with quote insider information. The rumor mill is they're still talking about a Fent Four Stick Two. Mm-hmm. Like like why would you even go there? Fantastic Four reboot. Uh, in case people are wondering why I keep calling it Fant Four Stick, look at the title. It's how it's written. <laughs> yeah, it's F A N T Four S T. It's Fant Four Stick. Anyway, um, it wasn't a very good movie. Like it, it fell apart in the third act, which many movies do, but this one fell apart really bad. Just the um, third act. Well, most people would agree it it had an interesting start. They don't say exactly it's good, but an interesting start. Now, the problem is they keep trying to do the origin story of the Fantastic Four. And the origin story of the Fantastic Four is they these four characters went out into space, they got hit with cosmic rays, and then they... Uh, and again, cosmic rays, just generic... The what, 1960s called the Winter Origin Story back. <laughs> right, exactly. And then instead of all developing radiation sickness and dying, they became the four elements in human form. All I could think of is this, is that, one, we know what happens when gamma radiation hits you. Look over in Japan back in 1990. Uh, there was, the, I can't remember the name of the reactor, but they were trying to mix um, properties together to get the enriched uranium to burn it, you know, for the fuel, end up, um, causing an uncontrolled reaction. They got they saw a huge bright blue flash, got all hit by gamma radiation. Most everybody died. There was one person who lived, and his DNA and his cellular wall started to break down as he went. He was kept alive for 88, uh, 89 days, begging for death as his bodies, his cellular wall, everything started to fall apart. It was just disgusting what happened to the poor guy. So when I hear that, he they went out in space, he got hit by fucking you know cosmic rays. No, he they would be dead. But right. at the same time, uh, when, when, that turned dark in a hurry. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> sorry, I got knowledge of weird shit. <laughs> I never said it was useful. It's just weird. But when I think of the origin story, why not? If you want to reboot this universe that badly, why not do a Spider-Man reboot, where it was the, it, they're already there, they're already, and they go, "Well, this happened," and they just kind of move on. You don't need exactly. the goddamn origin. I mean, it's exactly the the important part of the Fantastic Four is how they cope after the event, not how it happened and when it happened and where it happened. Who cares? Just I I need to know what kind of gun Bruce Wayne's parents were shot with. It is key to his character. (laughs) Was it was it a forty four? Was it a nine millimeter? Was it seven six two NATO? I need to know these (laughs) things. Seven six two NATO. It wouldn't Jesus. have been 762 NATO. The only gun that fires that is the Walter PPK. I think. I don't know. <laughs> well, just... maybe he had one. Hmm? Maybe he traveled forward in time and got one because they weren't made at the point when Bruce's parents died. Hmm? Speaking of bad ideas. Flash went what... back in time and brought the gun back. What if <laughs> you had a great series... And you announced, oh yeah, this character you've been following for the past seven years or more in comic Ooh. form is going to be killed. I know or, what you're talking about. Let's say he won't make it to the end is what the creator said. I know exactly what you're talking about. And he also kind of whispered that the whole thing might be dying real quick as in the whole series, right? Yes. Now, uh, uh, would you be talking about a certain thing that has to do with dead people walking? 
Uh, possibly. Some would call them zombies, but apparently in universe, the zombie craze never existed, which is how they explain why nobody knows what a zombie is until it happens. Blah, blah, blah. We're talking about The Walking Dead. The now, comic, not the show. Both. Very impo- well, it's important to uh, emphasize we're talking about the comic right now because this is what the news is about. Well, no, I mean, it, it goes into both. So oh, okay. in... In the in the panel for whatever, Robert Kirkman, the creator of The Walking Dead, I'm not sure if he still draws or writes, but uh, he basically came out and he said uh, at the panel, because The Walking Dead, the show, uh, has been kind of waning in popularity. Uh, some people are still fully on board, but a lot of people in the last season or two have been kind of saying, you know, this show isn't what I wanted it to be. It's not what I remember it to be. I think I'm done. Mm -hmm. I'm one of those people. I left, uh, when they didn't, uh, show Negan killing the people at the end of whatever season it was. Because it it was a cheap way to, you know, cliffhanger and figure out what the fan response, like, who should we kill? You know, like, you know, rather than having the balls to kill somebody at the end of the season, they waited until the beginning of the next season when they had all the popularity polls and figured out, okay, these are the characters that we're going to kill. But Negan, who's supposed to be a very scary a uh, very awful person in the comics and is still very popular in the comics is kind of a joke at this point. Like most of the fans of the show, they, they don't even take him seriously, which is a shame because he's a great potential character to, I guess, bring back uh, like some hype for the show. Robert Kirkman came out and said very specifically Rick Grimes, the main character, is not going to make it to the end of the story. Really? Really? I mean, I fell off of the Walking Dead bandwagon a long time ago. I made it through the first season, and I started on the second. I'm like, I'm done with this. It just it became too corny for me. But a, a lot of people left at the farm. Really? So I wasn't the only one, huh? No. You were not the only That makes me feel a lot better, actually. <laughs> so it's not just my hatred for TV. Uh, obviously, all jokes aside, though, I, I'm surprised that they would jump the shark like this. Because that's truly jumping the shark. Right. That's that's like that's like coming out uh, and saying, like, we didn't actually expect Superman to die in Batman v Superman because they didn't say he was going to die. But mm -hmm. that's what Robert Kirkman just did. He just came out and said, before we see the last couple seasons or the comic or whatever, hey, I'm going to kill off my main character that's been around since the beginning. Enjoy continuing watching the show or reading the comic. L like, like, why would you do that? I, you'd imagine he'd do it without saying anything to cause that much more of an uproar. Because, I mean, it would cause people to go, what? And they'd go back, want to read the rest of them beforehand, because you know, you know that the death of Rick would be a huge uproar in both social media, the forum circuits, everything. People talking at oh, the yeah. water cooler would sit there and bitch and scream about how, I can't believe Rick died. I loved him so much, blah, 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 blah. And people would want to go back and go watch the old ones, wa read the old ones to get caught up. You know, right. saying it now, I mean, you jump the shark a bit early, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, I mean honestly, in, in my opinion, if they took away like, the one guy that people are expecting to get through it, it would just make me want to stop watching it. Yeah. Exactly. Like, there was a point where where I kept hearing people talk about the show, and I haven't read the comic in a while, and I was thinking about getting back into it. And d despite the fact that Rick has gone – and part of it is Rick has gone through so much that at the end of the day, I was wondering if he would make it. Like, man, he's gone – like, in, in the show, he's gone through a bunch of stuff. In the comic, it's much worse. He's had his hand cut off. Jesus. Uh, he's, he's lost his wife and his unborn child 
in the comic, which in the show they she actually gave birth. Um, he had his other kids like half his face blown off, and and like let's just say he's been through the ringer a few times, and yet he keeps going. And he's gone through psychoses, and he's gone through all of these things, and they sort of did that in the show. And he's like the main character that you want to find out if he will make it, and now we know he's not going to make it. Why should I continue? Like, this is the point where if I were still watching, I'd be like, well, I'm done. I don't care anymore. That's it's as if you're trying to put the death nail in your series long before it's truly should be there. Right. Like this is this is like when uh, NBC or CBS put Star Trek, the original series on Friday nights at 10. That's that's literally putting the nail in the coffin. You, you just don't do that. I, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like killing off like the main character is the kind of thing that you do at the end of the story, if at all. Yeah. Now I I know there's a book that you guys because we're still trying to cover all of the fucking Comic Con news because there's a shit ton going on here. Uh, there's a book that you guys are pretty happy is being turned into a movie. It's called Ready Player One. I, I actually know very little about it. Uh, I've heard about it. Uh, so. I know I'm I feel like I'm kind of stomping all over the podcast today but I do know a little bit of information and what I know is that Ready Player 1 as a book is about uh people in a dystopian future who pay a lot of real money to enter a game world where they can do anything and get basically escape life's terrible nature. So it's World of Bas- Warcraft. Well, I was going to say, <laughs> it's basically um, The Matrix, but with a, f- a subscription fee. Yeah, yeah, it, it is very much Matrixy. Can I have this and, right now? I, w- I would pay for this right, right. now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so the problem, the problem with the book being turned into a movie is that in the book, there's tons of nostalgia. Like, they reference Tron, they reference uh, Freddy Krueger, they reference uh, uh, Iron Giant, they reference a bunch of, a bunch of like, they reference so many things that to turn this into a movie, the licensing rights would be insane. Nobody could do this. Except one person. Steven Spielberg. He, apparently they they were they had a script that they were going to do that removed all of these references because they thought well we'll never be able to get it then spielberg got on board and the first thing he said was put them all back in they have released a trailer for this movie it has them all like like it's it's an eyegasm of nostalgia porn it's just like he the main character enters this matrix like world and suddenly he's fighting freddy krueger in a mech suit with the iron giant behind him and uh, it's hard to explain exactly everything that's going on i'm sure like this is one of those movies that when it comes out on home video people are going to frame freeze frame it frame by frame just to find all the little things in it oh there's that character I, oh there's that other one oh whatever my only question is as a person who never read the book i i hear it's good but is it just nostalgia porn? Like, like what's going to make this a movie? It seems like um, we're talking a lot about nostalgia porn today because it seems yeah. like it's just kind of what's happening. <laughs> uh, I was given the book in university. I never got around to reading it. But from what I can remember of the, its description, it's a, a huge game world, like Casual said. Uh, but there's, like, apparently there's some kind of competition in it in which if the players are able to find, like, if I forget if it's a key or if it's something, but they get, like, the fortune of the person that created the the whole game world. 
So it's like virtual Willy Wonka. Something like that, I guess? It's been so long since it was described to me, that may not be what they go for with the movie, but uh, yeah, it was something along those lines. I don't know. Maybe. Interesting. Very interesting. I can't help but just keep on thinking, like, oh, it's World of Warcraft, but just with VR. Uh, you know, it sounds like it'd be fun to see. It sounds like it'd be actually interesting, but you're definitely right about nostalgia porn. It, it's definitely going to ride the shit out of that nostalgia porn wave that's been going on. And another one of the nostalgia porn that's happening is Star Trek. Uh, Star Trek Discovery, exactly. Um, apparently, it's coming back. And we're gonna have another Kirk again, and <sighs> no, no, it's it's not it's not that well. Okay, so Star Trek Discovery was supposed to come out this year, but obviously they announced that it was coming out like at the end of last year and said, "Oh, it's coming in January." Bullshit. <laughs> um, and that's that's true. It was bullshit. It's coming later this year or early next year. Um, like it's, it's coming either in the September, October, November, typical TV season timeframe, or it's coming January, 2018. I, I, we, they still haven't announced a specific date as far as I know. Um, but here's, here's the problem. And I think we talked about it in another podcast. Uh, Star Trek Discovery's timeline is the worst part as far as most fans of Star Trek are concerned. The reason it's a problem is I believe it's set 10 to 30 years. I'm not specific on that before Kirk takes charge of the enterprise. So in a way it's almost like Gotham, like, you know, it's before the, you know, that main character that you all love. Well, we're going to tell a story of, him not really being there, but he's a kid. I mean, they already had like a series that was like a couple, maybe like a couple hundred years before the original. Yeah, it, it was like eighty years before the original series, uh, Enterprise, and yeah, yeah. It, it wasn't terribly well received because they did certain things with it that fans were like, "eh." Enterprise wasn't that with uh, Baldy as the captain? No, that's uh, it's the Quantum dude League. from yeah, the dude. Yeah, that's oh, what I was okay. saying as well. Now I know what you're talking about. Yeah, but I but forgot they, that was even a show, man, because that was so shit. <laughs> <laughs> the the biggest problem is uh, with this weird timeline. They've they've revealed some things at the at the comic con. One is Spock's sister. Now, you for people that aren't fans of Star Trek, you okay, whatever. But here's the thing: we already got. Spock's half brother in one of the movies, and people did not react well to that because it's one of those characters that they just pulled out of their ass, like, oh, by the way, Spock has a half brother, and he's known about it all this time, but never told anyone because reasons. Also, he never existed until this movie. They're doing the same thing with a Spock's sister. Like, she's going to be related to Spock via his father. And they're saying that she's going to be a major part of the story. Why doesn't Spock ever talk about her in all the years that the show's been on? Maybe it's because he's, you know, it's so illogical to talk about your kin that it felt never necessary to talk about. I I, I could see them rapping and somehow with, you know, but why? Why they is it needed? They say... They say they're going to explain it, like why he never talks about her, because they kind of have to. But uh, like exactly, like why why even do that? The second problem is it going to be like? Sorry, is it going to be like? Uh, he goes up to um, Kirk and is like, "What? I never told you about my sister. No, I totally <laughs> told you about her. <laughs> I told I told you about her. Then I had to wipe your mind. Oh God." Or, I can see and, and, even that, yeah. even that, or it's because Kirk's a horn dog. He's like, yeah, I'm not going to tell you about my sister. <laughs> <You're the fucker. laughs> Damn it. That's actually a good reason. So the other, the other thing that came up was they showed us uh, pictures of the Klingons in this show. Mm-hmm. Now, 
for those that remember, the original series Klingons basically had gold skin and uh, bushy eyebrows or whatever. I think they're also uh, they, a bit brown and smelly, right? They they couldn't afford to do anything on the original show because uh, they had no budget. So that's what they did. And whatever. It was fine. Who cares? They're they're the equivalent of communism in the in the show. You know, they're they're the red menace of the show. Then they did the first movie and because they had a budget, they changed the Klingons to have the what most people recognize as the bumpy heads. Mm-hmm. Then J.J. Abrams got involved with the reboot-ish movies, and he changed them to have sort of bumpy heads, but also have, like, pierced things all in their heads and, and you know, slightly different again. Because movies. <laughs> because movies, because J.J. Abrams likes to make little changes like that. Now they sort of have the bumpy heads again, but now they've got, like, spikes on them. Like, they it also, looks like they come to points and stuff. Yeah. They all, James J. Abrams also took away all the hair that they had, because they had, like, really long hair in the shows. Oh, yeah. They kind of made them all baldies. So, my my question is, why do this again? Like, why why make it confusing in a universe that is generally, they try to have some some sort of continuity? Why, why do that it's 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 kind of the same thing with um you know the, the superhero movies how they always have to tweak the costumes between every iteration like captain america is worn right. like three different versions of the same outfit yes but at, but it's a costume we can accept that <laughs> but there's nothing wrong with it just leave it alone right exactly you know, now, if you're like a whole new director or a reboot or something, sure, go nuts. But if you're in like this, like you know, the MCU for example, just pick a costume, and that's fine. It's not broken. Don't fix it. I'm totally with you on that one, one million percent. For the record, the only true Klingon is Worf. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> um, speaking of MCU though, I I, I got to get back to this, guys. There was a leaked trailer. Now, first off, it seemed pretty uh, scuzzy of someone to do this. I know Rad said something earlier during the pre-show, and I couldn't help but agree with him. Uh, Rad, what was your exact opinion on this one? Uh, you're probably confusing me with casual. Was but it casual? I'll, I thought it was you, Rad. I'll, I'll offer my opinion anyways. I'm sorry, uh, man. I can, I can paraphrase. Basically, it was a terrible, first off, it's a terrible phone angle. You're literally like right underneath the screen. And it's yeah, actually the half of it is cut off. Exactly. Second off, if you've waited, you know, how long and spent how much money to, to get in there and um, and they specifically don't want it out there and you're going to record it anyways, you know, to get the quote scoop on people. Mm-hmm. Just why? I mean, they didn't, you know, you're not doing like some, some, service for the greater good or something. It, 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 we have to know! Well, yeah, of course I want to see it, but it's I, I'd rather see it when they're ready for us to see it because I have well, a funny feeling there's a reason they're holding it back. I'd rather see it with a good angle and sound. Exactly, dude. I, I, will, I will wait, thank you, for Marvel Entertainment on YouTube to release it. I think one of the things that goes through people's heads when they do this is because like DC, like DC and Marvel will release trailers in their own time, but sometimes when trailers get leaked, they'll to circumvent that they'll release the trailer ahead of when they mean to. So I guess maybe it may be like people try, trying to push the trailer out as soon as possible or something. I don't know. I I I think in this case they don't have to do that. Because it's it's such a such a a terrible recording of it. Well, and also, not only is it a terrible recording, but like, do we need any hype for Infinity War? I mean, it, it, this is this is going to be the movie that possibly breaks two billion dollars. And uh, also, not to mention, 
the the Traegor, so called, is nothing more than a character montage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it basically shows. Look at all these characters, which you've seen in fourteen movies, or is it fourteen or fifteen? I don't know. It's been there's a lot of those movies now. You could tell who people were excited for because you could hear them pipe up and cheer for certain ones. Like when Spidey came up, everyone lost their fucking minds. Oh. Of course. I mean, the the fact that Spider-Man is... Uh, now, I will say, of Infinity War, I am very excited to see it because of a lot of reasons. But one of the reasons is something that I hope they do, but they don't have to, but I really hope they do. I want a snark-off between Tony Snark... Uh, Star Lord, uh, Star Lord, and Doctor Strange. Oh, here's um <laughs> something kind Ant Man and Rocket too, but uh, something somewhat related. So, in our in our preparation for this this particular topic, uh, the trailer was posted about um, about two and a half hours ago. Disney has already taken it down. Of course. Oh, of course. <laughs> not surprised at all. And and YouTube is not going to argue with that because they don't want it's the Disney. wrath of Disney. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Beware of the angry mouse. <laughs> now, now speaking speaking of uh Infinity War and things related to it, uh, there's still movies coming out before Infinity War. Like, they, they're they hyping up Infinity War, but we've still got uh, a movie that is back to the nostalgia porn. Uh, seems to be trading on the whole 80s stuff uh, with the way the trailer is designed and the, the font of it and everything. Um, Thor Ragnarok. Oh, I'm so fucking amped for this thing. Now, this is Stacy I hate movies Kruger saying that. I'm I'm poking fun of course. Uh, it's okay, you can poke fun at me all you want for this. I'm willing to take the wrath of this one cuz it looks exciting. But here's the thing. Like I was already like I I said it before when we were talking about Aquaman and how, you know, Thor is another part of that like how are we excited for this? But that first trailer for Thor Ragnarok I mean, I was more than sold. So they, as they do, have released a second trailer. It's up on YouTube right now. Mm-hmm. We'll probably have links or whatever in, in the description. Um, they showed a l- maybe a little bit more than I would have liked. Uh, you know, but at the same time, if it's possible, I'm even more hyped now. Just because of the interactions between Bruce Banner and Thor. Mm -hmm. That's what sold me. No shit. Um, I'm excited. I I really kind of feel like they let a little too much out of the bag, but that's what you have to expect sometimes. It's just what movie theaters do. Um, Of course, it was our own fault for fucking watching, so we can't bitch at them. (laughs) (laughs) Really, it was, you know. But, But I couldn't stop myself. It's just fucking exciting. It really is. I, I'm excited for it. I can't wait. It looks so damn good. Um, can this be out now, please? Please. By the way, please. I will warn. I will warn. Don't watch that trailer already having an erection. Because <laughs> it cut that one meme. Please, my penis can only get so erect. It really does happen because you go, wow, it's possible to get more erect, and then it starts to hurt. It rips. You know, it's it's bad. It turns into like a fucking, you know. Um... And we're way off the rails and going down the cliff. Now, what I what I would love to what I have to bring up though is Thor Ragnarok comes out in November. Justice League comes out in November. Who's going to win? I honestly don't know. And, and here's here's the thing. Like, Thor, Marvel has a track record, so obviously there's that. Thor Ragnarok has an amazing trailer, and it has people excited to see this movie that don't even give a crap about comic book movies. Mm-hmm. But 
the Justice League is the Justice League. I hate to say this, but I think even if the Justice League is another Suicide Squad, I think it still wins. Mm, I don't know, man, because the pure star power behind Thor, I mean, the, how good it looks, how it looks like it's going to go, oh, look, that Thor 2, that was crap. Come watch this. This is going to blow it out of the water. And Justice League, it's going to be hype. It's going to be huge. I'm excited for it. But I've always been one of those people, except for Justice League Dark, who went, eh, Justice League, it was a little too Boy Scout for me. Where Thor looks like it's going to be good. And th- I, this is me, the Batman DC freak, who goes, I, I think Marvel's going to win. I really think Marvel's going to win this one. I hope they both win, but I know we don't live in that kind of universe. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> It like would... I legit, I I legitimately want to see the the um. I I legitimately want to see DC succeed, but at the same time, I wish they could have just spread them out a little. Like maybe Justice League in December. I don't know. Honestly, yeah, I, I personally I think Thor is gonna win purely based on I like the look of it more a little more, a bit more than Justice League. But if Justice League does win, then that's I'm perfectly fine with that. Marvel can take one loss. If Justice... Well, it won't be a loss. I mean, let's face it. They're both going to make probably, you know, close to a billion dollars. That's true. If not more. Rip our wallets. <laughs> exactly. But here, here's the thing. If Justice League sucks, does this kill DC... Like, does all goodwill from Wonder Woman just go right out the window and people say, fuck them, I'm done with them, they don't know what the hell they're doing? I want to disagree with you and say that they wouldn't do that, but yeah. I I, I see this being the fucking put up or shut up point for DC. Which sucks, because DC's characters are so fucking cool. I love DC characters so much. But if Plus, they fuck this, they're screwed. Let's face it, that trailer is pretty awesome for Justice League, so mm-hmm. I do want it to succeed. Oh, absolutely. And I, I, I can't help but sit there and watching the Justice League trailer kind of stop and go, uh, you know, everybody's like, oh, the Kryptonian, the last Kryptonian is not here. This world is destroyed. And it gets towards the end and it shows them looking at somebody off camera. Oh, gee, I wonder who that is. It's fucking Superman. Of course Could it is. It- be Superman? Yeah, come on. We know it's of course. Could it be Martian Manhunter? No. No, it's Superman. <laughs> it's, it's not Superman. Uh, the, 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 and here's why. He's listed in the frickin' credits on IMDb. Exactly. Henry Cavill as Superman Clark Kent. I, I mean, you, you can't... He, he could still show up in a flashback. Ooh, uh, yeah! He rattle could, the comeback! But... I no, they don't do that. They bring him back immediately because we want to. Th- there's there's a theory going around right now that after Justice League, because they're doing all of their solo movies, what they do is they they don't hard reboot Superman. But now that he's back, he's got some perspective. Zack Snyder's portion of the universe is kind of done, and I'd not saying because of his current life issues i'm just saying you know his his part is mostly done because they've realized that his vision wasn't entirely what people want Mm -hmm. they're moving into a new stage where they're kind of handing the reins to more to the creators more to the directors and stuff which by the way marvel started doing right away and it worked immediately um There's talk that Superman might get a soft reboot in the sense that we do a sequel to all the events that have come before. He's alive now. Now he's hopeful. And his S meaning hope, actually, you know, he's he's a brighter character. And I I I think that's the route you take. Like you you don't hard reboot unless that's what they're doing with Flashpoint, but you just kind of keep the self-correction going and give us a little bit brighter world. Is this this where it turns out the person at the end of uh, the Justice League trailer was the the, uh, T-Rex from Jurassic Park? (laughs) 
God damn it. I, I, uh, I also read a theory that may, that that could also potentially be Supergirl. Ooh. I mean, maybe, but... The, the evidence somebody pointed to was earlier on, he's looking at a hologram when you hear the voiceover say, no Kryptonian. And yeah. people have freeze frame that looked at the hologram and said, huh, it doesn't seem like this person, this person is wearing boots, but not pants that go all the way down to the boots. Which is a, a Supergirl variation costume. I I think that whatever they do, uh, if this movie is passable, it breaks a billion dollars. And um, it still it doesn't even have to be good, <laughs> just passable. I love not but, even good, just <laughs> passable. We need a movie version of Power Girl with boob window. With Power Girl, yes, please. Yeah, with the boob window. Now, um, the big thing Justice League should not do is preclude J.K. Simmons from playing J.J. Uh, J.J. Jameson in Spider-Man. Well, we know he has, he has to he has to play that role until the end of time. <laughs> <laughs> we we unfortunately know that's not going to happen. Even though I agree, every time I hear Lord Simmons, I just go to, I just automatically picture Richard Simmons. <laughs> And so I get really confused for a second. <laughs> Let's dance your size. Mm. Uh, <laughs> sweaty to the oldies, folks. Good Give God. me pictures of Spider-Man. Oh. And this is what happens when we've been podcasting for a long time. <laughs> they get, they get loopy. Sound, sounds like a uh, perfect, well-done transition towards the potential end. Potential end. End of what? The end of the podcast, you don't say. Not, 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 it's, nothing funny? It's the dimension with the dragon. Everybody knows what the end is. Oh, God. Let's not bring up Minecraft, please. Of all <laughs> things, not Minecraft. You guys have been fantastic. Thank each and every one of you guys so much for being here. I do want to go on a bit of a, a goodbye note of uh, Living Dead. The director, George Romano, or Romero, excuse me, um, dead at 77. Uh, George, you are a hell of a director, and you really helped cement... An entire genre of movies. You created it and you made it. You perfected it and you kicked ass doing it. George, thank you for being who you are. Am I right, boys? If there's ever a zombie apocalypse, he needs to be the first one. Right, dude? He, he was the reason. I heard that that in his will, he actually said, uh, don't bury me for two days. You need to watch the body just to be sure. <laughs> 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 On, yeah, George, he was an amazing director. Uh, he kicked ass. He made that whole genre of zombies. George, you're amazing. Sleep well, rest well, rip whatever you want to say. You are a fucking god of zombie flicks. Thank you so much for doing what you do. Guys, thank you all so much for tuning in. We have been the Odd Pod. Who have you goofy bastards been? I am Robbie. I am Rad Hazard, and I just spoke to you about podcasting. <laughs> I am casually challenged with nothing to add to that. <laughs> nothing witty. All right, guys, take care of yourselves. I will catch you all three of you boys next week, and we'll catch each and every one of you guys next time.